grappling with a text, the beating heart of the gospel, right here in Philippians chapter 3, where Paul says, I don't, I don't boast in the righteousness of my own. I have a better righteousness, a higher righteousness, a righteousness which will prevail before the Father on judgment day, the righteousness of Christ. Oh, here it is. Let's grapple with the text. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Woo, we are on pay dirt now. But remember what but Paul's talking about? If you haven't seen, where's last week's thing? If you haven't seen last week's video, look at what he's talking about. He's talking about the thieves of joy who are the false doctrines, the dogs, the mutilation, and so forth, who, who come and say, you got to be circumcised. These are the ideas that it's grace plus works, the idea of works righteousness. And Paul is just, there's nothing that makes Paul more upset than those who would replace the gospel with works or mix up the gospel with law. And so he says, I got all these things. I, I'm a Benjamin, a Benjamite. I'm a, he, I, I'm a Pharisee. I'm persecuting the church. According to the law, I'm blameless. But what do I do with this blamelessness? according to the law? What do I do with my righteousness according to my own works? These things that were gained to me, I count as loss for Christ. Remember how Paul says to live as Christ, to die is gain. So death is gain, but what is loss? The, the righteousness, the righteousness of works, the righteousness of the law, Paul says all that I count as loss for Christ. Why? Because you have two choices, really, in this life. You, you can, you're going to find, uh, you're going to be, oh, look at this. This is what the hipsters have a bracelet. See my bracelet there? Anyhow, uh, the, uh, <laughs> distracting myself. You have two choices in life. What are we talking about? You can be your own savior or you can have another. If you are your own savior, there's no room for more than one. If you're going to save yourself, then go ahead. But Paul says, look, I count that as loss. I'm not going to be my own savior. No, I'm going to have Christ as my savior. Jesus will be mine. So every, so that this clinging to my own righteousness, to my own perfection, to my own works, etc., etc. No, I, I'm going to throw it away. Yes, doubtless, I count all things as loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. So who is the Savior? Who is the Lord? It's not myself. I'm not trying to be my own Lord, my own rescuer, my own Savior. No, Jesus has that job. Remember this great simplicity uh, of the Christian doctrine, which basically comes down to this. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the one who who rescues, who redeems, who saves. And that means what? It means I'm not the Lord, I need a Lord, and I have one by faith. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and don't, and I count them but dung. Oh, that's a special word. That I may win Christ. So everything else I'm throwing away. I count it as refuge, as, as waste, as scubala. Scubala. Look. How do you spell? I got the word here to show it. Scubalon. Where is it? Scubalon. Refuse, rubbish, leavings, dirt, dung, specifically of human excrement. <laughs> That's what Paul thinks of his own works. That's what he thinks of his own uh, uh, of his own efforts. That's what he thinks of his being a Benjamite and a zealous to keep the law. It's just it's it's poop. So that I may win Christ. This, I mean, do you see Paul? Ray? There's nothing that will get Paul as worked up as someone who would say, no, no, we need to exalt our own works so that we can justify ourselves and stand before God uh, by our, according to our own worthiness. No, this has to be thrown down. So that Paul would be found in him, that is, in Christ, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that righteousness which is through the faith of Christ. Now, there's a big fight about this faith of Christ. We notice that the King James is really quite nice. If it's a genitive, it just, that means a possessive. Well, it's more than possessive. It'll just put the of Christ. But this is the, this is the faith that comes from Christ and it is a faith that returns to Christ. Remember, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the source and the goal of our faith. So we can understand it. The easiest way to understand it is faith in Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, so that God delivers us 
a, a righteousness, a passive righteousness, a righteousness that is not our own righteousness, but the righteousness that belongs to Jesus, it's given to us by faith. This is this great discovery, and you could go back a couple of weeks ago at Reformation time, we to told the story of how Luther discovered the, this passive righteousness, not the active righteousness of the law, but the passive righteousness of faith, and that this was really was the spark of the Reformation. Fantastic. That I may know him. So, so look, at this, let's just say that I'm going to be found in Christ. I'm not going to be found hidden in my own works. I'm not going to be found hidden in my own righteousness. I'm not going to stand on the last day justified by my own efforts. No, I'm going to have a righteousness which is not of the law, the righteousness of faith, the righteousness which comes through faith in Jesus, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now, it, it, this is this of God righteousness reminds us especially of 2 Corinthians 5.21 where it says that he made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness, remember how it says it? Of God in him. So that, so that the righteousness that we have by faith in Christ, is it's not even the righteousness of Adam and Eve. It's not even the perfection that they had in the garden. It's something more than that, something more wonderful than that. It's the righteousness of God. So that this righteousness, which you have, you, the Christian, listening to this, watching this uh, grappling with the text video, you have the righteousness which belongs to God. You are as perfect, as holy, and as righteous as Jesus himself is. Your account is that full according to the gift of the gospel, according to faith. It's, it's stunning. You could never, you, we couldn't believe it except for by faith because it's just impossible for reason to get there that we would have the righteousness of God, but that is precisely what we have. And no wonder if we have that righteousness that we look back at the righteousness which comes through the law and the righteousness which comes through obedience and we say, what do I think of that? I think it's a pile of dung. Compared to that, to, compared to the righteousness which comes to us in Christ. And when these other preachers were coming along and preaching to the Philippians and saying, hey, you should be circumcised, you should have a righteousness of your, uh, of your own doing and this sort of thing, Paul just says, are you got to be kidding me? That's crazy. We have a righteousness which is given to us by faith in Christ. So Paul says, that I may know him. Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Look, his, 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 that I may know the things that belong to Jesus, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. And I have my salvation there in what Christ has done, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead, so that he knows he's not going to attain to this by his own work and his own efforts, by his own deeds and doings, but know that it comes through the death of Jesus. Now look at what Paul wants to know. I want to know Jesus. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want to know the fellowship of his suffering. And I want to, three, four, be made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. So when I know Jesus, when I know the resurrection, when I know the cross and how he suffered, then I also am suffering, conformable to his death. I'm also in this life willing to suffer so that I might attain to the resurrection. Do you see it? So that Jesus died and Jesus rose again. This is what the resurrection looks like. Jesus died and rose again. He suffered before he entered into glory. And we also suffer before we enter into glory. We are being dragged along with Jesus through this same thing. And so we live now by faith. Not by sight, not by works, but by faith. And we have this great assurance that the perfection of Jesus belongs to us. Un unbelievable. Now this is the heart. You see this. The heart of the, of the doctrine and the heart of the theology of Philippians. It's the heart of the doctrine of the scriptures. It's the heart of the doctrine of St. Paul. It's the heart of the doctrine of the Reformation, the Lutheran Church. When, when someone gets a hold of this, it's not my own righteousness. Not Look, not having my own righteousness. You do not have your own righteousness. Then nothing can surp surpass it. You, you go through fire. Uh, through through uh, through death through through any sort of trouble to to grab a hold of that 
which is not your own, that righteousness which is of Christ. That, that, that you can't let go of this. Once this preaching captures your heart, it has you, and it'll drag you through death to life eternal. So there it is. It, let's call this the beating heart, the gospel beating heart of Philippians. Absolutely wonderful. Look at that. that's, the, that's the fancy setup for grappling. That's what it looks like. That's what the desk looks like. Thanks for being part of this grappling, by the way. It's great fun to every week look at the, oh, this. Is the, this is what I've been looking forward to. Unfortunately, I, it might be all downhill from here, but there's some great stuff. Again, I say rejoice. Paul has coming up in chapter four, so stick with us. Uh, make sure to subscribe and get the notifications. We try to send these out every Monday or Tuesday or something like that. Uh, so, so stay tuned for future grapplings. And if you have ideas about what should come next when we finish with Philippians, uh, post that up in the comments below, and we'll start working on that as well. Thanks.